Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome to another MAMG Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. When we left off, we met Prosecutor Von Karma, and man, isn't he just a bundle of joy. Good God, I hate him. He's one of the more annoying prosecutors in the entire series, I would say. Because the other ones are fun and quirky, Von Karma just hates everything. But anyways, we were able to prove uh, Miles' innocence, at least for the day, so we need to do another investigation phase to see what we can find out. Maya. Hey, Nick, it's you. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Uh, okay. Oh Maya. How long do you have to stay there? Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, seeing as this is my first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Phew. Oh, and he wanted me to get the bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Uh-huh. How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? Probably. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever be able to see my sister again. Oh, it's okay. I guess we gotta go, so I'll talk to you later, okay? I'm gonna go see Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? He's a live wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Okay, Gumshoe, where you at, buddy? I need to talk to you. You're my friend. Are you here? There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. He is. We just gotta find him. Gumshoe? I haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through the nose on a date with lovely Kianse. Probably so. Okay, let's go to the woods first. Maybe Lada's there. Can't believe she freaking lied to us, though. Oh, there's Gumshoe. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial today. It, uh... Yes? What about the trial? Well, I was gonna say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks. Alright, what you got for us? We need info, we need new evidence! Detective Gumshoe? Any idea what strategy Von Karma's planning for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. <laughs> I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, you see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a lawyer, and him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. Poor Edgeworth. Poor Edgy! I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. 
Huh? She's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told them to let it go as soon as they had a report written up. Man. I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged away by the bailiff? I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Edgeworth, you were so moved, I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice Edgeworth. He was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm gonna head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. But thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is the bail gonna be? <laughs> Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth. Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. That would be nice, but I really doubt he would do that for you. Not for you, Phoenix. <laughs> he just won't. All right, so can we go back to, um, the detention center? We need Maya. We definitely need Maya. Is she with us now? Hey, Nick! You finally came! They just finished the paperwork and I'm free to go. Free at last, eh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? I'm like, I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. We sure do. Can, can you go with me or no? What do you think we're, uh, what do you think we should do next? We're kind of lacking in the clues department. We should go to the park and look for Gordy. I, I was kidding. Still, if there are any clues out there, the park's as good as bad as any. What do you say? Shall we head down there? Sure. Okay, so I guess we can just go. <laughs> um, okay, so back to Gord Lake. And now we got Maya with us. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct, working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's Lana. Yeah, I really did it today. What do we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? What do you mean? What you gonna do for us? What did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half to just say I'd been a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had them. I'm sorry. I know it caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder. <laughs> True. Also, don't plan on witnessing a murder. What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure, the trial's only stoking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to stardom. All right, Lotta, you go, girl. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit medium training first. <laughs> uh, Lotta, what did you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. W what information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Uh, exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey. I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We gonna deal or not? What do we do, Nick? 
a deal, I guess? We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gordy? But, but Gordy doesn't... I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof they show he don't. Uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something, y'all come to me first. Got it? Okay. Right. See y'all later. Okay, Nick. Let's get hunting. H hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay. And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so back to the beach. Um, hi? Wh what's that? The, the Steel Samurai, Nick. Yo, Maya. Larry, what the heck is this? Oh, it was my girl Kianse's idea. She was all, if you like put this here, it would be like really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow, that's real impressive. She could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show's finished now, so she got them for free. Right. I love this music. Yo, Nick, what happened with Edgeworth? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh. Hey, Larry, did you know Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Well, we were only in the same class for a year. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. When the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. We don't know what's going on either. Ah, oh, crap, I, I, I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, we only knew Edgeworth for a year. You wouldn't think there'd be, like, that good of a, or that strong of a friendship between everybody. But whatever. Hey, Larry. What was that big thing up there before? Huh? Oh, the big guy. I've had that for about a month. Yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Huh? Oh, right. The, the compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's that little unit by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. In here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. It's got a lot of hot air. He might be able to. Alright, let's examine it. Compressor. What's this machine? That? That's a compressor. I used it to fill up that balloon there with the air. Huh, neat. Just got it repaired yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. Okay. Doesn't that Steel Samurai look a little out of place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this Steel Samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh? Or really? It looks pretty well made to me. <laughs> Still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These Steel Samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. Okay, I think we're good, but let's check the trash. Trash can's empty. At least the place is well maintained. Okay. I don't think we have anything else we can show him. Oh, Gordy, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the guy that's selling my dogs faster than I can cook them. Do you think Gordy really exists? Nah, I think somebody probably saw something else that they thought was Gordy. But I'll keep selling samurai dogs till the truth's out. Probably, yeah. Um, is there anything else we can show him? Probably not. Okay. We haven't gotten to the boat rental shop yet. 
We need to go everywhere at least once because something new may pop up. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop's closed for good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all. They're probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. Yeah, but, I mean, you can make money! Larry is making money off of this! He's selling hot dogs! And he is making bank! Alright, whatever. Anyways, uh, the woods. Lotto, you over here? <laughs> yeah, she is. Hey, y'all! Well, y'all find anything out about Gordy? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It's cold out here at nighttime. It is a little chilly. I... I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, you don't! No sneezing! That's you! Whoops. I told you no sneezing! See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. It trigger on one of Von Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well sorry is nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. <laughs> oh, poor Nick. I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the girt dirt on Gordy. The girt on Doherty. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to talk to us then. Um, hmm. Where do I need to go? Larry, I don't know if I have anything for you. Okay, we need to find some more stuff. So we can go... to the Criminal Affairs Department. Maybe Gumshoe's there? Yeah. Hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait. You didn't go and do something that's gonna hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. What do you mean, again? Whatever. Have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. He is very honest. <laughs> Alright, the investigation. How's the investigation proceeding? It's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See... Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. The guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case, Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down in Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking for him. Huh? Are you out of your minds? Eek! You got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Uh oh. Detective Gumshoe's scaring me, Nick. Uh oh. Did he take her away? I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lada. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. H huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Secret weapons. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now. Everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, Missile. M missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile. Missile. Here, boy. <laughs> Perf. <laughs> Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, cute dog. A cute dog? And this will help us how? Next secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal poll. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing bowl? Never knows who you try, pal. Okay, this next one's the last one. 
No, please. I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three. A metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe. We're looking for something alive. <laughs> right. How are we supposed to find that with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, what should it be? Um... I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either, for the totally opposite reason. Oh well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. Uh, metal detector. Can we borrow that metal detector? Sure thing, pal. I'm not sure what we're gonna find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. Borrowed metal detector from Detective Gumshoe. I don't remember if we have to use each of them for something. I know the metal detector will find us something though, because I mean, come on, it's a metal detector. We need to go um, somewhere with this. Um, let's go give it to Larry. I don't know. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. Eh, yeah, figures. Okay. Lotta? Maybe? Um. Hey, Lotta, look at this. It's a metal detector. I know what it is. Um. I'm not sure what's gonna pick up Gordy, though. Unless he's been eating people's watches or spare change or something. Oh. I hadn't thought about that. Um, okay? So nothing. Um, can we go to the boat riddle shop? Ah, here we go. N Nick, it's beeping. The metal detector's found something. Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick? Look! Huh? An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy... Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh... Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Okay, we need this air tank. Of dubious value, is that what it just said? That's amazing. Alright, Larry. Now you can answer some questions for us. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted you uh, to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Say, is this air tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags that are around your steel samurai there. <laughs> Must be a coincidence. There's strings of flags everywhere these days. L like elementary schools. And used car dealerships. But look, why would I need to use tank anyway? To go diving. To inflate something. You use this to inflate that didn't you? Inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. <laughs> now, why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um, see, the compressor I was used was on the fritz, so I tried using the tank to inflate it just once, and uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. Uh, we need to know more. It didn't go so well? Eh, uh, yeah. Do you think it could be a little more specific? C come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us! Tell us! Fine. Whatever. It's like I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then... Goodbye, Steel Samurai! The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated Steel Samurai with it. <laughs> what? Off into Gord Lake? 
He sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Oh, Larry, I love you so much. Um, so the tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th? A week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in the boat looking for it. I mean, Kiyase gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last? Was the night of the murder? Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? Nah. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Lada! We found your, your uh, Gordy. Oh, it was Larry. Oh, it was Larry. No, I don't need to move. I need to present to her something. Um, boom. Yep, I have to say I know exactly squad about that. It's painfully easy to know when something does catch a lot of interest. Um, okay, so how do we do this? Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Uh, we, we found them. Huh? Gordy? Oh, we found them already. What? I haven't seen any monsters yet. Y'all for real? Gordy really exists? Wait, I need proof. You get a photo? I have proof. Of course I have proof. No fair, Nick. It was when I went to the bathroom, wasn't it? That's when you made contact with Gordy. Enough jabbered already. Let's see your proof. Air tank. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Uh, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine. <laughs> Did you really have to set it up like that, Phoenix? He tried to fill it. He used his air tank, and when the valve flew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a pretty big, loud bang when it flew. Uh, bang? Oh, steel samurai, no! The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time... It's the steel samurai. A couple is taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait. So, you're saying that Gordy... Is really the Steel Samurai? Oh, I'm sorry, Lada. Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lada. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info, like I promised. Poor Lada. So, tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental? There's someone there. I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lotta. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know? Wait, so you have another photo? Well, yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just a lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but here, take it. Alrighty. Bye now, y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Bye, Lotta. Poor Lada.
It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah. The legend of Larry, familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. Ugh. Alright, let's take a look at this picture. Oh, I can't. Okay, cool. Neato! Uh, so we need to go back to the boat rental place. Hi, Larry. You're staring off into space. Of course you are. Hey, Nick! This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Can we go inside? We could go inside. Okay, cool. Meg, is that you? Hey, hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. N Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg, y yes. Finally made up your mind, have you? M my mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. P pasta? Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. You made your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running? An old man like me. Polly, the kids are home. Hello. Hello. Uh, N Nick, uh, what was that? A parrot. The one on that perch. Keith! Y yes? I'll leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. N Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Barley? Hello! Hello! What? Uh, yep. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved? O old man. The pasta restaurant? <laughs> um, pasta shop? <laughs> yep. Didn't think. The wet noodle would live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know. So that makes you two the third generation. Meg. Y yes. Tomorrow, we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. The dough tossing? You too, Keith. Y yes? You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West. Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Y yes! You know, the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right. Yeah, everyone knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep this all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love how he, like, snaps awake. Duh! <laughs> Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Boston, the wet noodle. Though, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days. Darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. Um... Okay, let's examine the bird. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? He ignored me. What? You forgot, Meg? You gotta call her name first. Her name? Bolly, how you been? 
Hello. Hello. Squat. See? Neat. So the parrot's name's Polly. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? That'll help. Polly. Oh, Uncle, please wake up. Ah, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. <coughs> everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number of the safe? One, two, two, eight. Huh? All right. <laughs> hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Um, okay, we need to... Uh, present... Polly? Or no. Now listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? Our rainbow lolly. <laughs> I figured out the last color we should use. Indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Oh, okay. Um, I, I really want to talk to Polly. Or no, the safe. The safe, yes. Look, a little safe. Hmm. It's locked. Oh, yeah, but we know the code. It's 1228. Aw, oh, come on. No? Okay, fine. Uh, trash can. Wow, he has a television in here, too. He sure does. Wow, there's lots of various fish in Gourd Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. <laughs> of course they are. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on this table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murders? Aw, oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. Okay, we need something else. Um, Let's present to him some of these things. Lake photo? Nope, he's not going to do it. Um, hmm. The gun? Nope. Uh, I don't know if I have anything I can show him. Let's move. Okay. So we need to find a way to crack this guy. There's got to be something else we can do with him. I just don't know what. Maybe go back to the entrance and get the dog? Oh no, something's happening though. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe was in here. Now that you mentioned it, didn't he say he had a meeting to go to? Ah, that's right. Let's come back later. Dang it. Okay, so I can't get the dog, so it has to be this. Edgeworth? Are you here? Looks like Edgeworth is in questioning. Let's come back later. Alrighty, never mind. I think- Oh, Grossberg! We haven't gone to Grossberg yet. Apparently Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Everybody's gone. Uh, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. Dang it! Alright, we need to figure out this old guy. Find out- Ah, fresh air. I gotta say, freedom feels great. Behave yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Misbehaving's much more fun. It's not gonna be so much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay, pay your bail again. Right, I'll behave. Oh dear. Okay, I don't think there's anything I can talk to you about. Yeah, let's not. Nothing we need. Um... Maybe the parrot? Don't waste time showing me things. We have to get cracking on this case. You know the enemy has more tricks up his sleeve. He's bringing in another witness. 
we know the other witness. We just can't get anything out of him. Okay, so I think I need to show him, like, anything and everything. And maybe... I'll be able to get something out of him. Um, because the only other thing I could do is to talk to Polly again. Maybe? Caretaker Shack. Polly, you got anything? Polly! Polly! What's your name? Polly Scrat! <laughs> Cute! Maya's found a new friend. Oh, I got a reaction when I showed him my, uh, lawyer badge. That's a lawyer's badge. Y yes it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Uh, yep. I got you figured out now. You're not, Keith. N Nick. Now's our chance to clear things up. Um, sir. No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg, either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on the lake the other night. Please, help us. Hmm. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Sure. Okay, we promise. N Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say you too, Meg? Y yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know? Now, what was it that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello, Squat. Uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Anything new? No. Okay, so I showed him the picture and now he's all, I up, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith. N yes. It's okay. You can call me Dad. D Dad, you know something about this. Uh, yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes? Yes? I know all about that. I've seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose... Since you're taking over the shop and all. Oh, because I agreed to take over the shop? Really? Wow. That is the most roundabout way to do it. Alright, what did you see? I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang. So I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang. A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. Yep. Oh, what did he say? Uh, yep. I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time. I promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Uh, yep, that kid next door. He always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow, I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk? Don't forget DL6, Squawk? H huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6, Squawk? What? The DL6 incident? 
Hey, mister. I mean, dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think we need to do a little, do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh, Gumshoe's still in his meeting though, isn't he? Hi, Larry. You still doing all right, buddy? I hope so. All right, let's see if he's out of his meeting yet. Ah, he is. Hey, pal. Long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? Uh, the boat caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it's appearing as a witness tomorrow, right? <coughs> huh? How would you? Hmm. That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided at first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Hmm. Alright, what about DL6? Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell you the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident's related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Oh, pff, we got a parrot to do that for us. Boom! What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat's rental shop's parrot. Parrot? Parrot? The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. What? It's true. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten anything? Squat! Don't forget the L6! Squat! H huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? N Nick? You think he might be... I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Though, there is this, uh, through, this, through there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. All right, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we face Edgeworth's past. Let's do it. Let's move on in. Boom, records room. Oh, wow. It's amazingly dusty. Ten years of fouls and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Uh, oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll get to the right file. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts, like a summary. Right. Summary, summary. Found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. What? 
Is this the same district court we're holding the trial at now? It looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all the lights went out. That's not good. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours? That would be like scary in the dark. Oh God, there was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors went unconscious. The survivors? Uh, one of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. And that was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Yep. Victim data. Do you have any data on the victim? Edgeworth's father. Yeah, hold on. Victim. Victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35. Defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So, he was on the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it should not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh? It sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Two, f two shots, two fires. Got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm. That would be the guy that got my mom arrested. Hold on. This is it. The man arrested was a suspect in DL6 was... Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So, he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he'd have to have done it. But... He was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived, so much that he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Indeed. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick? Are we gonna take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. Y you're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Alright, DL6 case file added to the court record. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now, all that's left is a trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Oh, Dad. Alrighty, so that is the end of this section. We've done another investigation phase. Learned a little bit more, but not a ton. There's still a lot of stuff that we have to uncover, but we'll have to save that for the trial and see if we can peel back these layers and find out what's actually going on. Until then, though, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next MAMJ. Let's play. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Um. Who was that? It, it was me. Maya? It, is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you're actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lotta, do you really, uh, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night?